angry, and so is my next guest, the former Minnesota governor, Jesse Ventura, author of a new book, They Killed Our President, 63 Reasons to Believe It Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. So in the chair is Jesse Ventura. Welcome to you, Jesse. Thanks, Chris. Oh, so, has the government of the world's greatest superpower really shut down, or is this just some vast conspiracy? Well, you know... They're shut down, and I guess my question would be, since the government shut down, that should mean we shouldn't have to pay any taxes, right? <laughs> Yet, it's not going to work that way, is it? There's, even though they're not working, we're still going to be paying? I think it's time for a revolt in this country. I've been advocating a revolution for years now. Revolutions don't have to be violent, but we need one, and I would tell everybody here... Vote them all out of office and, wait, don't vote in a new Democrat or Republican. Vote for anyone but Democrats and Republicans. Well, it's quite interesting, actually, because if, let's take a little look around this room here, because I did a little sample. Of, you weren't all hand-picked for any political persuasion, but how many people here are Republicans? So just a few hands. How many are Democrats? A few more hands. And how many are neither Republican nor Democrats? So you are the Jesse Ventura future of we American are the majority. We right. are the majority. But how much of that do you think, this is just a random section of people that pitched up to watch the show, but how much of this is down to just general dissatisfaction with the Ameri American political system? Well, it's because the Democrats and Republicans have created this corrupt system, and they've been in charge now for 150 years. They've created a system that's based completely on the concept of bribery. If you pay them and bribe them, you get audience with them. If you don't, you're out the door. And so we need to get away from this concept of bribery. And uh, that's why I'm considering making a run. But I need to, I, a couple things have to happen first. But I would run on this, ladies and gentlemen. My simple campaign would be this. I would give you the opportunity to elect the first president of the United States that does not belong to any political party since George Washington. He is our only president that belonged to no political party. And I think it's high time we elect someone that does not belong to these two gangs. Because it's the gangs that dictate what's going on. This is all gang warfare here. This is gang warfare, where the, the gangs put themselves first, the gang first, the gang's money first, and we, the country, become second or third. We're actually third in line. See, every time I've spoken to you about this, I've been saying, no, 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 Jesse, it's not like that. And yet their approval ratings plummet each time I've talked to you, uh, even lower. And actually you end up thinking, yeah, there are a bunch of gangs. They over, are. Overpaid, underworked children. Well, let's look at it this way. The big thing is health care, right? Well, in my last book, I showed you all. These elected officials have four options to choose from of health care. They won't give us one, yet they get four to choose from. Now, what do you think since of, what the do government think of shut down, are they getting paid? Of course they are. What do you think of Obamacare? Do what now? What do you think of Obamacare? I don't think anything of it because my belief is quite simple. We in the United States of America should have a policy that anyone who gets sick should be able to go to the doctor. Now, how they want to do it is up to them. But if we'd get out of all these damn wars, we'd have more money to pay for health care than we could shake a stick at. But instead, it's go to war, go to war, go to war. I love the reaction of the American people on the Syria deal. The calls were 300 to 1 opposing any more war. Finally, you're all waking up. Finally, you're waking up that we've been at perennial war for 60 years. Enough of this. Enough of this war crap. Well, enough of this particular segment, but you're coming back after the break. And let's talk about my book. To speak more, Jesse Ventura, after the break. Special guest, Jesse Ventura. I mean, get, Jesse, you, you hit all the right populist notes with all this stuff, but let's get real for a moment. Is it feasible in our lifetime that you could have a candidate running for president who was successful, who was not a member of the Republican or Democratic Party? I did it. I won the governorship of Minnesota and was not a member of the Democratic Party. Could you do it on a presidential level? Sure. If I'm allowed in the debates. But you notice those two parties control the debates. They won't let anyone else in them. If I can debate them, peers, I can beat them.
It's that simple. Somebody tweeted me earlier saying, nobody who wears tie-dyed shirts could ever be president of the United States. <laughs> well, I what guess is your response? My response would be, then I guess a real person shouldn't be president, because I'm a real person. Do you know when I ran for governor, I never used a prepared speech? Is that true? Yes, because my belief is if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. You've written a new book. Yep. Uh, it's called They Killed Our President, 63 Reasons to Believe There Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. Not new that there may have been a conspiracy to assassinate him. What is new about your book? Well, what's new about our book is there's always new information coming out. There's always more and more. That's what makes it so intriguing to study it. That's what, to me, makes studying the Kennedy assassination more interesting than, say, reading a Vince Flynn book or a Tom Clancy book. Those are all fiction. The, this really happened. So who, and, who killed Kennedy, do you think? Uh, you can't answer that question because it's been 50 years and there's no way, no way to say specifically who. Well, I, I can, can answer it. I can well, tell me, you this. Ask, Wait, I can let me tell, tell you this. I think. It I wasn't think, Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, I think it was. And in yeah. fact, I interviewed a guy called Clint Hill, who was the bodyguard. If you see the footage of the, uh, of the cavalcade yeah. and the bullets coming, he's the guy that jumps on the back. Yeah. Uh, he's actually, he was Jackie Kennedy's bodyguard. Yeah. Jumped on and she, Why weren't back. Secret Service on the bumper that day? They were removed. You can go on, uh, on internet That's and see That's not what it. he told me. They were removed from the bumper That's and not the not Secret he... Service guy turns to his Jesse, boss here's and my goes, point. what? Jesse, here's my point. And they took him off the bumper. The... Why did they change the way that... For Dallas only, the way the motorcycles were lined up. They put four of them way in front and the others all behind. They didn't go in the standard wedge, which was used in the two previous days before. But in Dallas, that changed. They got them out of the way to give a clear shooting lane. Let me finish my point. Clint Hill, who was there and was on the back of that limo, he, he wasn't said... wasn't on the back of it. He jumped on the back of it. Yeah, from a car way behind and it Correct. took him how long which to is, get there. But he believed... Lee Harvey Oswald added the loan. Now, me, why do you know more than he does? Well, because of the fact there's a whole lot of information. Um, there, it's so obvious when you read this book. I'll let you people be the judge. Read the book. It's so obvious. The, the Secret Service. Well, on, who do you wait, think did it? The Secret Service protected Kennedy more after death than they did when he was alive. Because they illegally took the body out of Texas. Autopsy by law should have gone on there. Lyndon Johnson, the car was a crime scene. Everybody knows tape goes around a crime scene until forensic gets through with it. Monday morning, that car was in Michigan being refurbished, already moved. Jesse, no one was allowed to see the car. Who do you think killed There's multiple JFK. choices. Well, give me one. Well, the Kennedy made tremendous amount of enemies. The military-industrial complex hated him because he wouldn't go to war in Cuba. He was already withdrawing troops from Vietnam. There would have been no Vietnam War. Him and Khrushchev were actually back-channel communicating, and they were, had both planned on ending the Cold War by 65. Khrushchev was taken out of power. They were doing it via Pope John in the Vatican. The Pope died, and Kennedy was murdered. We had the Cold War for 20 years. So what does your, so the military what does your brain tell you is the most he also, Kennedy was going to take away the oil depletion allowance, which is what all oil guys use to make big money so that uh, they can make $30 million a year and pay no taxes. So he had big oil mad at him. He had the military-industrial complex mad at him. Plus, he was doing the first move towards human rights in this country, which the South hated him for. So you've got multiple choices of many. You've written a book about it. Well, what do you think is the most likely theory? I think that here's the deal. There were two conspiracies that took place. The first conspiracy was the actual one to murder the president. The second conspiracy was to cover it up after it happened. Both of those took place. Now, you have separate players on both sides of that. Well, look at it this way. Uh, read the opening the Katzenbach memo that we opened the book with. Mm -hmm. This is from the acting attorney general, and he states, Monday morning, we must convince the people Oswald acted alone, that he had no one with him, and that if he went to trial, he'd be convicted. This is Monday morning before they've looked at one shred of evidence. The, attorney, the acting attorney general of the United States sends this memo to the new president. And that's exactly what he says is exactly, and they said, we need to form a commission 
to rubber stamp all this so that we don't have any type of congressional or other investigations. Woe be that we would have a real so Jesse, investigation. Jesse, you're a straight talker. I've now asked you multiple times. You've written a book I about this. I can't tell you who I've given it. you my theory, which is the pretty commonly held one. It was Lee Harvey Oswald. I've cited, he couldn't make the shots. I've cited my source, who was one of the Secret Service detail, who actually went on the car, and he says he acted alone. You've got 30 seconds left to try and give me a straight answer. A I can't give question. you one. I can't tell you who did it. I wasn't there. And it's unfair to ask a question. You think you've won the argument simply because I can't name who yes, did it? Yes, I do. Well, okay, James Files was the shooter on the grassy knoll. He's already confessed to it in prison. You had the confession of E. Howard Hunt on my TV show, yet mainstream media said not a word about it. Hunt confessed, LBJ knew, he went right down the chain of command. It was called the big event. It was his deathbed confession to his son. Yet well, no you've only given me so far. It. You've only given me six reasons so far. There are 63 reasons to believe in this book. There was a conspiracy to assassinate JFK. As always, Jesse, you are a compelling talker when it comes to these things. I don't know how much I believe, but read I love the, the way I love the way you read tell the it. book. I urge people to read it. It's a good talking point. Read good it. to see you. All right.